Hello my fellow YouTubers and welcome to another episode of Develop with WP. As always, I am your host Bobby and today we're starting a new little mini series within our How to Build a Plugin series on short codes. Uh, if this is the first video you've ever seen of mine, we are on video I think in the 20s on this How to Build a Plugin series. You should definitely check out that playlist if this is the first video you've seen. There's been a, a whole lot of awesomeness that's come before this, so check it out. Uh, our previous series that we just finished up, which you can see here, is our how to use Ajax within WordPress, where we um, use jQuery and JavaScript on the front end to make a Ajax request and post data uh, to our WordPress database, and we use WordPress as the back end. And what's really cool about that series is, unlike a lot of Ajax series that you see out there, not only do we cover the front end part of requesting and using Ajax, which most people cover, we also cover the handling and validating and saving of that data on the back end as well. So it's, it's a full thing, you should definitely check it out. But enough with that, on with today's show. Uh, we are starting the Short Codes plugin series, as I mentioned, uh, and this plugin that we're creating is going to have at least three different short codes that do various things. Uh, and they're going to be rather complicated, I think, or complex, you know, relatively speaking. Uh, but before we dive into those, I figured we would take this chance to cover just some of the very, very basics of how short codes work so that when we get into the other work later on, the more complicated stuff, it'll make a lot more sense. So without further ado, let's get coding. All right, so one of the first things you're going to want to do uh, is get caught up to where I'm at. I've only done two small things. You'll see right here that I've created a new file called WP Job Shortcode. And this is where we're gonna, this is the file that's gonna hold all the shortcodes that we're gonna create. Um, once you have this set up, you're also going to have to go over to the main jobs listings plugin and add another require once here to make sure that this file gets loaded with our main plugin. All right, once you have that set up, we will be ready to go. So the first thing we're gonna do is just create the basic outline of a very simple short code. So let me just take a minute really quick and put something together. All right, so let's uh, clean this up a little bit and let's talk about what's happening here. So the first thing we're doing is we're simply defining a function and this function right here is, is gonna be the function that gets executed whenever our short code is run. And the way that we ensure that our short code gets run is we use this function called add short code and it takes two parameters. The first parameter uh, is the tag name and this is a uniquely named name <laughs> best way to put it that you come up with that that you're going to reference as your short codes name so this is the name of your short code and then the second part is the function to be called whenever this short code gets executed and as always just like when we're using our hooks and our, our action hooks and filters these two line up if we go over to the code and look at our post, you can see I've already added this in here, short code job listing. And so what happens is, is whenever WordPress uh, goes and pulls the content for a post, it parses through that content and it looks for any short codes. Once it finds a short code as this structured like this, it then parses that short code against a list of known existing short codes and sees whether or not it lines up. If it does, if it finds it, it says, okay, I found this short code. Now what do I do? Oh, I execute this function. And then it runs this function and it does what it does. If for some reason it finds a short code that doesn't exist, then it simply outputs this as you see here. So by using add short code, it's our way of telling WordPress that a new short code with a new name exists and then what to do with it when it comes time to use it. Pretty simple. Uh, and if we go and look at this one, I already have it open here and we refresh it you'll see that it says I am the short code yo and if I change it I don't know 
exclamation point, I guess, because I'm not that creative. You see, we have an exclamation point and a period, which is just bad grammar. So that's pretty simple. But let's cover a few quick points. One of them is that you'll see here that I am returning this value. And the reason I'm doing that is because short codes have to return their value. They can't echo. Generally, we would be, and you've seen me do this a lot where we just echo this. But what happens is, is if I echo it and we go and refresh this page, you'll see that now that my now my short code is actually coming out above my content, which is not at all what I was trying to do. So that's not good. So the moral of the story is, is that to get your short code to execute where you wanted it to, do not echo it. You need to return it. With that being said, there's another little gotcha that if you're not not aware of will really sneak up and get you and you won't understand why your code your short code's not working. And that is WordPress core functions. So when we do things like the content or the title, when we call those functions, a lot of times what happens is, is they go and retrieve that data and then they echo it out to uh, to WordPress. And if you were to call those functions within a short code and they echo out their result, that'll too that'll also break your short code. So luckily WordPress, most of those functions, if not all of them, have a similar version of it that does the exact same thing. It goes and gets the exact same data. However, it actually returns the data as opposed to echoing it. So when you're working with short codes, you're going to want to double check on some of those function names that you've probably become accustomed to using and just ensure that they're providing the data in the right format that you need for a short code. The other thing is pure straight HTML. So a lot of times you'll see, and we did this when we did the fields, whenever you have, say for example, you're going to output a lot of HTML, which in a, in a short code, in the example of a short code, that does happen. Well, a common practice is to close out PHP, reopen PHP, and then within here, just you know, do your normal HTML. So we'll do an H1 tag and say, I am a title save that and let's go look at this and you'll see that it worked it put out an h1 it put out the content i wanted but again it's above the main content it's not where i want it and that's another gotcha or takeaway from working with short codes is that you can't just put output pure html you have to output it as a string which would look something like this Get rid of our PHP that we put in there. All right, so now we've just wrapped this as a string and we're, and we're returning it. And there you go, we get the exact same result except this time it's in the right location. So that's some of the, the basic things to look out for. There are, there's one more thing that we need to cover and that's the fact that short codes can actually take in data so you can pass parameters to a short code and the way we do that is we have to first make those parameters available so we're going to put in this thing called ats and then we're going to put in another variable called content and we're going to make it equal to null and we'll cover that in a minute so what happens here is on a short code and you've probably seen this if you've worked with short codes is that you can actually go in here and give it attributes so like title equals my new title Okay, and save it and then this it'll actually pass that to this function so let's do this let's go ahead and get rid of this and do a print print oh, that's not what we want do a print r and we'll pass it the ats that we're getting all right so if we do this if we update our post with these new attributes this title and we go and look at it You'll see that now we're getting an array with a with it's a key valued pair, an associative array, which we've built before, and it has a key of title and a value of my new title. And with short codes, we could keep going. You could pass in a I mean a lot of parameters. So we'll do another one. We'll do a source. You can see how this might be useful to load a certain image or something. We'll update that. We'll go back to the front end and look again. And now you'll see that we have another value called source. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to pass in certain parameters 
into this attributes array and then you're able to have access to those values in here to output stuff. So say for example, I was in this example, we are trying to put in a title and then an image. Well, we could conditionally load a different title and a different image based on these attributes by letting, letting the user pass in this information. One of the problems that you'll come in, you'll have with this though is that uh, at this point they can just pass in whatever they want. But what we want to do is we want to define what kind of attributes this short code can accept. And that's for a number of reasons. One, just so they're not just passing in whatever they want. And two, sometimes when you're writing the code for your short code, you'll be you'll need some of those values. Like your short code will not work, say for example, without the title. In that case, you need a fallback. So by defining what these attributes are ahead of time, you not only can say these are the attributes this short code takes, but then you can also set the defaults for those in case a value is not provided. So let's see what that looks like. All right, so the first thing it takes is an array. And again, this is an associative array of stuff. So let's put title equals default title. And then we'll put another one called source and we'll make it equal to uh, the Google URL. And then it takes a second parameter after the array of the original the original set of values that it's matching against, which is this at. So don't confuse this at with this at. They're two different things, but that's what it's doing. All right. So let's take a look at how this works. So we have our default set, and we'll talk about exactly what it's doing here in just a second. We have our default set, and we also have this set up here. So again, if you pass it a title or if you pass it an attribute, it should use whatever you passed in. If it didn't, it should show the default. So in this case, when we refresh, we should still see my new title. Let's check it out. And I broke something. I know what I broke. <laughs> nothing. I broke nothing. We, I got rid of our print R and I did an R that damn thing again. Excuse my language. All right, so let's pass in our ats again. It's kind of hard to show something if it's not there. Just saying. All right, so we see our array and we see my new title and we see a bunch of garbly gook. And that's because that's what we've passed in here. But if I were to go in here and get rid of this title and just pass the source, when we look at it this time, you'll see that I'm getting default title and then I'm getting the source. So you can see that it's using the default. So what's happening here? Pretty much what's happening is the attributes are getting passed into the function and then this function is taking this these very these values and matching them up with this array of values and if the value exists in the passed in array then it uses that value and if not it goes and uses the default and so that's pretty much how it works the other thing we need to cover is this content so the way content works is short codes come in two flavors. This is a self-closing short code, but you can also have what are called wrapping short codes. And a wrapping short code would look like this. You essentially have an opening and then a closing, kind of like HTML, and then in between it you would have stuff that you would have content. So I am the content. All right, let's update this and let's go see what we get. I must not have saved my post. You see that we're getting I am the content. So it's passing through whatever he, we get here as this ver content variable. So there's two types of things that you can pass to a short code. You can pass attributes, which you can use to set and display things in certain ways. And then you also have a wrapping short code that you can pass any old content in between and you could utilize that within your short code. So real quick before we wrap up, 
Um, I just kind of want to bring this a little bit full circle before we get into our real coding. But if we were to go with our original thing where we had return, and we had our h1 tag, and we were to go and put it, we wanted to do our title thing, we could go and put in ats and pass in the title parameter, save this, put a semicolon, I hear that helps. All right, and let's go look at this and pass in our title again. Update our post, double check everything, looks pretty good, see what we get. And you'll see that we get new title outputted as an H1. So this is just kind of brings it full circle and shows you a real world, world example besides a print R of like how you would do this and how you would access these variables. So hopefully this has been a very simple, a very simple introductory video, but I hope you can kind of see the power of, of why people like short codes so much and how useful they can be, especially with these attributes. These attributes really open up, and you're gonna see in the next few videos, really open up your ability to do some really unique and creative things. So again, if this is the first time you've seen a short code, I hope it's been very useful. If you're wanting to learn more and you're wanting to see what really can be done with a short code, well, stay tuned because we're going to build some really cool stuff in these next few videos. So definitely check those out when they're posted. Uh, again, have a great day. As always, I'm very glad that you were here. If you liked what you saw, definitely let your friends know about it. Subscribe. If, you have, if you're not already a subscriber, these kinds of videos come out on a regular basis. So definitely subscribe so that you get the latest and the greatest. And as always, have a great day.